Let's begin by reviewing the security architecture for Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. Let's take a look at authentication for the user interface. So first you need to sign in via your Azure Active Directory account. So here we can see the sign in page for that. Once you sign in, Azure Active Directory will redirect you to Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations sign in. And then finally, the Finance and Operations Start page will be displayed. So as you can see here, we have Azure Active Directory kind of as our central authentication for the user interface, which then will be viewed through a, the user's browser. OData Services, JSON-based custom service, and REST metadata service are supported through the standard OAuth 2.0 authentication. Certain applications can consume Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations web services. So for example, we have Power BI, um, which is consumed from the OData service. We also have Microsoft Azure Active Directory, or AAD. This is the native client application, so fl this flow uses a username and password for authentication and authorization. Then we also have the web application, which is the confidential client. A confidential client is an application that can be that can keep a client password confidential to the world. The authorization server signs this client password to assigns this client password to the client application. This will be support, supported post RTW. The security model is, is hierarchical and each element in the hierarchy represents a different level of detail. Permissions represents access to individual securable objects, such as menu items and tables. Privileges are composed of permissions and represent access to tasks, such as canceling payments and processing deposits. Duties are composed of privileges and represent parts of the business process, such as maintaining bank transactions. Both duties and privileges can be assigned to roles to grant access to Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Let's take a look at security authorization and access control. So first we'll talk about security roles. All users must be assigned at least one security role in order to use Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. The security roles that are assigned to a user determine the duties that the user can perform and the parts of the user interface that they can view. Administrators can apply data security policies to limit the data that the users in a role have access to. So here we have um, the user screen here and we have June up for example and here we can see the roles that are assigned to her. So she's assigned to the employer role, manager role, project accountant role as well. So this is where we can assign roles in the user interface. And then we can also see all of our users um, on the main user screen. You have to be set up as a user in order to use Dynamics 365 for operations, and you also have to have at least one role assigned to the user. Let's now take a look at security authorization and access control. So just on the left-hand side, I'll explain this table that we have a little bit further. So here we have our authentication, which is handled by our Active Directory, ADFS, or another type. And then we have our users at the very top. Again, you have to be a user in Active Directory in order to use Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Then at the top for authorization, we have security roles, which can then be linked to duties and privileges as well. We also have permissions that these privileges can be assigned to. So that's things like user interface elements, tables and fields. And then down below that we have data security. So data security policies, the record level security and table permissions framework. And then of course, at the very bottom of this, we have the Dynamics 365 for finance and operations database. So the first thing that we'll talk about is the process cycle. So uh, we saw this up above here um, in the authorization section. So a business process is a coordinated set of activities in which one or more participants consume, produce, and use economic resources to achieve organizational goals. So to help the administrator locate the duties that must be assigned to roles, duties are organized by business processes that they are part of. 
So in the context of the security model, business processes are referred to as process cycles. So additionally, we also have our privileges. So privileges in the security model for 365 for finance and operations specifies the level of access that is required to perform a job or solve a problem or maybe complete an assignment. So privileges can be assigned directly to roles. However, for easier maintenance, we recommend that you assign only duties to roles. A privilege contains permissions to individual application objects, such as the user interface elements or tables. And then we also have our permissions, which again are linked to your privileges. These grant access to logical units of data and functionality, such as tables, fields, forms, and server-side methods. Only developers can create or modify permissions. So here in this screenshot, you can see in the security configuration form, we have all of our roles, duties, privileges that we can assign to a user or role. So here we can see we have our roles and then we have all of the different roles um, that are in the system. And then we can see any references within that specific role. The Extensible Data Security, or XDS, framework in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations enables developers and administrators to secure data in shared tables such that users have access to only the part of the table that is allowed by the enforced policy. This feature is used in conjunction with role-based security. To provide more comprehensive security than one was possible in the past. Extensible data security is an evolution of the record level security or RLS that was available in previous versions. XDS security policies when deployed are enforced regardless of whether data is being accessed through Dynamics 365 for finance and operations web interface, SQL server, reporting services, or services. An XDS policy starts with a query to define the filters or limits that should be placed on that primary table or tables. When you create a security policy that links to the query and primary table that you want to restrict data for. Next, you will define the context for the rule, which could be based on a string, a role or group of roles. Lastly, then you can define the list of constrained tables, which are related tables that store data from the primary table that you're attempting to restrict a subset of data for. Several common design principles were used when creating the base 80 or more roles. These designs and principles include roles that represent the common access rights that are required for job positions within an organization. Roles that account for the organization's size, culture, and industry focus. Users are assigned to one or more roles according to their job. There are several different role types. So for example, we have a warehouse worker or an organization role like an employee or an application role like a system user. Role segregation categories are also included. Functional roles are designed to accommodate segregation of duties. Different categories of roles exist that each focus on their types of responsibilities. So we might have validation, verification, authorization, or management type of role segregation categories. In this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to create a new role in our fleet management project. We'll take a look at adding existing duties to the role, and then we'll also take a look at adding existing privileges to the role as well. So what we can do is we can do a couple of things. We can either create a new role or we can create an extension of an existing role. First, we're gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna right click on my project. We'll go to add new item. Over on the left-hand side, I'm going to go over to security and select security role. I'm just gonna go ahead and name one. I'm gonna call this one DB data entry clerk. And I'll go ahead and click add. So here I now have the role that I just created. We can see it's within our development basics FMS model. And what we can go ahead and do is add a new duty or privilege. So to do this, I can right click on the privileges node. I can see here that if I expand or collapse that there's nothing there yet. So I'll right click and select new privilege. I can now go 
over to the properties and specify a privilege that already exists and is already set up in the system. So I can go over here and I can select um, one of the fleet management, for instance, privileges um, that we have already created in the system. So I'll go ahead and scroll down and see if there are any. I don't see any that are related at the moment in time. So I'll just go ahead and select one. And then what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and add an existing duty as well. So I can right click on duties, new duty, and then I would need to go over to the privilege or the duties, um, the properties and select a duty that has already been created. Then I would need to just go ahead and save and build this. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create a new duty and then we will assign that duty to our DB data entry clerk role that we previously created. So we'll go ahead and right click on our project. We'll go to add new item and instead of role, we're going to go ahead and specify a security duty and I can go ahead and give this a name. So I'll go ahead and call this one, for instance, DB approve customer rental and I'll go ahead and click add. So now we've added this new duty and we can then assign privileges to this duty. Um, but first what I'll go ahead and do is we're going to assign our new duty that we created to our role. So we'll go ahead and right click on duties, click new duty, and then we can go over to the name and we can specify that new duty that we just created. And I'll go ahead and save. And then what we can do if we wanted to is we can go over to our duty that we created and then we can assign an already created privilege. Just the same as before, so we'd right click new privilege and then we'd go over to the name and specify the name of the privilege. Certain elements in the Application Explorer have properties that affect or control how security will work. Let's take a closer look. Let's take a look at some specific button properties that you can define when creating different objects in the development environment for security. First is enabled. This one is important because you want to make sure that if you want to use this specific security or object that it is enabled. Secondly is needed permission. This allows for different levels of control and access. Starting at the lowest level of only being able to view or read the control all the way up to the highest level of allowing for deletion. And we can see all of those here. We have none, we have read, update, create, and all the way at the bottom we have delete. And then lastly, we have needs records. Let's now take a look at some fields for tables that have to do with setting up security. First, we have allow edit. This defines whether you can change the value of a field. We also have allow edit on create, which allows you to only edit the field until the record is saved. Once saved, the value is locked down. Mandatory is used to require the field to be entered. The record cannot be saved until the, value, the field has a value. For a string, this means the value cannot be blank. And for a number, this means the value cannot be zero. And lastly is min read access. This is used to determine whether the field can be auto authorized for access. Now let's take a look at some form fields. First, we have allow edit. You can specif specify whether you can modify the data in the control. When this property is set on a container control, modifications are disabled or enabled for all controls within the container. We also have mandatory. This determines whether users must enter data in the control. If mandatory is set to yes, a red wavy line is displayed on empty fields and a warning is displayed if the user tries to navigate away from the field without completing it. In Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, the text area or the field will be outlined in red. Lastly, we have needed permission. This specifies the minimum permission level needed to allow access to the control. The values for the needed permission property represent a hierarchy. Red is the weakest permission or read. The delete is the strongest. Read is included by update, which is level one, which is one level higher in the hierarchy. 
The create permission is above both the read and update permissions. Therefore, read and update are both included with the create permission. The values for the needed permission property represent a hierarchy. Again, the read is the, wish, the weakest and delete is the strongest. Let's now take a look at menu items and security options in the properties pane. First, we have correct permissions. This specifies whether correct permission will be available to select when privileges are assigned to the menu item. Create permission specifies whether create permission will be available to select when privileges are assigned to the menu item. Delete permissions specifies whether delete permission will be available to select when privileges are assigned to the menu item. We also have a linked permission object. This specifies the name of another object, so for example, a formal report whose permissions are applied to this menu item. So this is typically used with action menu items. We also have the link permission ob object child and the link permission type. This specifies the type of object pointed to the link permission object property. Read permission specifies whether read permission will be available to select when privileges are assigned to the menu item. And lastly, update permissions. This will specify whether update permission will be available to select when privileges are assigned to the menu item. In this lesson, we will look at extending roles, duties, and permissions for Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Enterprise Edition. By extending a role, you can add additional privileges and duties to the existing role. So here we can see that there is a role called Retail Warehouse Manager, and we have extended it, and we can note that by this dot extension on the object. We can then take a look at extending this. So here we can see that we've extended and added a duty, and we've also added a privilege. This is noted by the bold and the green plus sign next to each of these items. So we can extend a role by maybe adding a privilege or a duty, for instance. Additional privileges can be added to a duty by extending the duty. So again, here we can see that we've extended the retail accounting export maintain duty, and we've added another privilege to that duty. You can simply do this by right clicking on the retail accounting export maintain or the duty and clicking add a new privilege. As of the current release for Dynamics 365 for oper Finance and Operations, you cannot extend a privilege. You are still able to customize a privilege and add new permissions.